Good evening, America. This is Professor Billy Mitchell coming to you from beautiful Las Vegas. I'm here in my game room today. It's a little hot and muggy out in the shop. So today we are going to talk about how to set your static weights in your race car. Okay, now I'm gonna try and keep this uh, in general or generic enough to where you can use this in any class, okay? So what are we talking about as far as static weight? Well, static is a fancy word for saying the car is not moving. It's sitting there, it's static, okay? Nothing's moving, there's no dynamics, there's nothing. It's just sitting there static. So there's things that we need to do to make sure that we get consistent settings week after week. And that really is the objective here. Make sure that you do it the same every time in the easiest way possible, right? So let's talk about, first thing is we have to prep. What do we gotta do to prep, okay? We're talking about static scale weights 101. A learning objective is how to do it so you have to be consistent. Um, prep list, you're gonna wanna make a list that's specific to your car, okay? Now I can give you references but this is the bottom line, okay? Before you scale your car, that car has to be 100% ready to go on the racetrack. And you need to read your rules and see how they scale or how what is legal and what not is legal because some tracks will scale the car before the race, some will scale them after the race, okay? And it drastically affects your car, okay? So you wanna know where is that line because you wanna be up to that line as close as you can, okay? So let's get started. First thing, all mechanics done. Everything mechanical, everything done on the car. This includes, and very important, adding all the fluids. If you are going to scale your car full of fuel, like I do, okay? I do it the same every time. Very important because fuel weighs about six and a half gallons are six and a half pounds per gallon. So if you're gonna scale it halfway, it is going to affect not just your rear weight, but your cross weight, depending on where the fuel cell's at in your car. Okay, so you wanna make sure you do it the same every time. So we're gonna go ahead and get that done. All your geometry, you wanna make sure that your toe, your caster camber, everything is set perfect the way that you measure it. Okay, like I like to measure mine all at one inch, okay? If you're gonna do yours, a lot most guys will do it at your static ride height. Which brings us to our next thing. You are going to remove your shocks and unhook the sway bar. If you're running a sway bar, you are gonna unhook one side, take your shocks off, put them right about where they're at in the car. Just kind of lay them there so you have the weight. But you wanna unhook them because what will happen is, is if they have a lot of rebound in them, they're gonna affect your cross weight and how you set up the ride heights in your car. A lot of teams that are running tour with coilovers will actually set up their ride height and get their weights with a set of dummy shocks, okay? That way there's no resistance because on the asphalt, we're running usually a linear degressive valving on the shocks in the fronts. So you wanna run a lot of rebound or enough to where the car's not bumping or chattering and that will affect. Now, some of the um, shocks, you can uh, pull out the adjusters and it'll bypass the shim stack, okay? But it just depends on what you have, okay? What I do in the modified, because I, I'm referring to my modified, I just take them off, put them right on top of the car, and then I can do everything by load bolts. I got load bolts all the way around the car. If you have a hobby stock, probably the same thing, okay? So let's talk about how what we're gonna do here. Set your tire or PSI and your static, or excuse me, your stagger, okay? What is stagger? Stagger means that one tire is bigger than the other. Typically, you're going to want your right side tire bigger than your left side tire because it's a different circumference around the corner. So if you are running a locked up axle or a locker or whatever in the rear of the car, you are going to have to have a bigger tire on the right side than you do the left side for the car to track properly. Now, if you're running an active third member, which a lot of the series out here on the West Coast have gone away from, like a spool, which I'll be blunt with you, if, if you're just starting out, put a spool in the car anyways. It's more consistent, it's easier to drive going in the corner, you're gonna be a lot happier. Less maintenance, that's huge. Where if you're running a Gleason or, or a whatever, there's tons of them out there that say they're gonna make your car super fast, it's the trick of the week, okay? 
yeah, if you get them dialed in and they're optimum and, and Nat's ass on, yeah, you're, you're good. But if you're the average Joe racer, or hobby stock guy, put a spool in the back of your car, okay? Do everything by stagger. There's other things on your car that you can get dialed in that are more important with you going fast in the race car, okay? You don't have a ton of test time like some of these big teams, okay? So this will get you in the ballpark quicker. Are you gonna pick up that extra 10th or so? Probably not, but the reality is neither are your competitors, okay? So, depending on your level. Right heights, once you get your stagger, let's talk about stagger, let's go back to that for a second. How do we measure it? You can use a stagger stick. This is going to go on the outside of the tire, about spindle height, and then you're gonna rub it on there with your tire set at a specific pressure. It's going to tell you the circumference of the tire, typically anywhere from say 84 to 87 inches, okay? So you're gonna measure that at given PSI. I typically will buy my tires um, in the back of the car, maybe an inch or an inch and a half smaller than the right side. When you go to the tire barn, they'll be marked. You can also measure them at the sidewall in the tire barn. You write down serial numbers. Again, it's about consistency. Where you start buying the same tires, you're gonna start learning once they heat cycle and come in, they're gonna change. Okay, so you have, that's part of the learning curve. You have to find out what that tire is going to do so that you get your stagger and you kind of come in. So if you find out, let's say, um, you're coming off the corner and your car is tight, it doesn't want to turn, you want to put a little bit of stagger in the back of the car, well, the next time you go to the tire barn, you might buy a tire that's a half inch mark bigger and see where it comes in at. Okay, because you can over inflate a tire or under inflate a tire and then it won't perform properly. So you have a little bit of playroom, you know, within about 10 to 10 PSI, uh, some guys 15, but the reality here is you have to buy the right tires. Okay, so we measure it with this, we measure it with um, our little quarter inch tape, which I don't know where it went, but anyways, I got a quarter inch tape around here. Now, you measuring the circumference of the tire, write it all down. See where you're at. Uh, you can run a little, you typically want to run less pressure on the left side, 5, 10 degrees. Left front, you can even get away. I've seen guys with the sidewall dimpling. When you're first starting out, don't mess with that crap. Especially most of your local racers are only going to be, you know, 30 laps. If you're running 150 laps, you see those guys, man, the left front looks like it's barely on, okay? That, because it's going to build up so much as it heat cycles. You don't want to have to mess with that. So... Right heights, how are we gonna meth set our right heights? Again, wherever you are scaling your car, whether it's at the track, whether it's in your um, garage, what have you, you are going to want to mark the floor for consistency, right? So even if you go to the track and you wanna just get a baseline, take your scales to the track and get a baseline, whether you have setup pads or not, it doesn't matter as long as you got a reference, right? So once you've scaled it in the car, or excuse me, in the garage, if you got scale pads that level it out or what have you, the bottom line here is you just want to reference, you want to do it the same every time. So if you're going to scale it at the track, your cross weight might change a little bit because cross weight is affected by the heights drastically where your left side and your rear, which we're going to talk about in a minute, aren't really affected by heights, okay? So you can get close on those. So let's talk about this. Ride heights, you can use tape measure. Again, you can measure your frame. Mark your frame, mark your right heights. I like to use big tapes so I can read it because I'm blind, okay? Um, the other thing you can do, which a lot of the dirt cars will do, is especially in the front of the car, they will measure the front ride heights based off their A-arm angles, their top A-arm angles. So they'll lay this on there, same thing. They'll put a smart level on it, digital level, they'll measure it, and then they'll write it down. They can, as they raise the car up or lower it, that A-arm angle is going to change. This is big for the guys that are running in dirt because when you go to the racetrack or whatever, you're typically out in the weeds somewhere. It's not very level. You can get your right height pretty damn close if you break something. So measure it with this, and then if you got to make an adjustment, you can do so to your right height. Okay. PSI goes without saying, buy a good vent gauge. You don't want to go down to AutoZone and buy a gauge. Buy a good gauge online from one of the uh, vendors. Uh, Long Acres, there's a whole bunch out there. The thing is consistency. You want a good gauge that's going to hold up. Also have a spare gauge, okay? That gauge can be run over or whatever in the pits. 
and then you're screwed, okay? So bring extra. Gauge is one of those things, you want spares. The other thing is safety, safety first. Always torque your wheels. Torque them at home, don't wait to get to the racetrack. You will forget, okay? You're in a hurry, you're trying to get through the pits, get to the first practice, blah, 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 blah. Torque them in the garage before you load your car up. That way you don't have to mess with it, okay? It's one less thing to have to worry about. Okay, so now we've talked about all the mechanics in the cars done. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about what to set is your ride heights. When you set your ride heights in the car, I'll okay, give you a little cheat code. Start at the left rear. Your left rear is going to have the drastic effect on the rest of the car because it has the most amount of weight on it, especially if you're running an asphalt car because you're going to run it, you know, uh, cross weight or left side weight anywhere from 54 to 60 percent. Where's all that weight typically gonna be? Most of it on the left rear, okay? And that's the way you want it because that's gonna give you the drive off. Asphalt cars, a little different. We won't, we won't go into that, not my forte, but bottom line is with an asphalt car, uh, if you have more cross weight in the car than you, uh, you do the other way, and we'll talk about what cross weight is in a minute, you wanna start at your left rear with your right height, okay? Then you wanna move up to your left front. Again, mark where you're measuring every time. It's about consistency. Move around to the right front, measure that, and then you go on to your right rear. A lot of your chassis manufacturers will have a reference as far as their setup points. You wanna ask them, are you measuring this stuff with the driver, without the driver? Are you measuring this with fuel, without fuel? What is your total weight, okay? You wanna ask them all these questions, how they're measuring everything so that you do it the same, okay? If they've already figured this out, they know what their car likes and what it doesn't like for a given track, why reinvent the wheel? At least it's a good starting point, okay? I'm gonna give you some references of where I would start if I knew nothing, but, um, but always talk to whoever built your chassis or if you bought the car you used and they were competitive, where they set things up. It'll save you a ton of time as long as they're being honest with you because a lot of people will not share that last 10%. Okay, so they're thinking you got to figure it out. Okay, so let's start. What are we using to scale the car? You will see here, I got these old scales. I've had these 30 years. I don't even think rep goes around anymore. You can pick up, I highly suggest you pick up a cheap set of digital scales. I've seen them all over the internet now. Anywhere from 300 to 600, 1,000. You can go crazy with scales, okay? Are they really going to make your car faster? No. Okay, you can save. I've had some where you can save the settings. I just write stuff down in the book anyways. Uh, the latest trend has been wireless, right? Everybody's gone wireless. Never made that transition. The reason being is because now you got your pads that got batteries in them and everything else, more stuff to have to maintain and, and break. That's the way I see it. And I'm an RF engineer for the government. Okay, is it convenient? Maybe, but is it worth the hassle? I don't think so. Keep it simple, stupid, right? Kiss. So you got, what are you doing with scales? When you have digital scales, you typically have a wire. They're marked. You got to make sure that you set them up the same every time you have a pad. They got short pads. They got big pads. Whatever you can get a deal on, okay? As long as they're a well-known brand and they work well, uh, typically what you want to do is walk around and stand on the scale, whatever your weight is, and make sure they're all the same. You also want to make sure that they're plugged in the same way. I actually mark the pads so that I put them on the same tire every time, okay? Keep it consistent. The more consistent you do this, the more valid the information is going to be over time. So we got our scales. We got them underneath the car. We, we've set our ride heights. You can put strings on top of the pads to give you references. Um, I have... Uh, set up pads that are 10 inches off the ground. You don't really need them when you're first starting out, but they are convenient in the shop because you can level them out because your typical garage is going to have a two degree slope in it. So if you can level them out, that's a little better. The other thing is, is you can get under the car and start measuring other things like, you know, your uh, rear trailing arm angles, your pannered bar, your top link angle, all that stuff you can measure. You can also run strings on the pads. Um, it just gives you a little more um, consistency and it makes things accurate. Do you have to have it? No. The big ticket here is you can put them on the floor and there's other ways to set all these things and get you in the ballpark and string your car and all that stuff. It's just a matter of preference and time, right? 
So how do we do the first thing we're going to do once we've got our pads on there, we've zeroed them out, we put the car on there, lower the car down nice and soft. You need to know whether you have the driver in there. I set my car up. I weigh about 200 pounds with the helmet and everything, radio, uh, everything in the car because that's how they're going to scale it, right? So what I will do is I will simulate me in the car So then, because typically I'm doing this by myself most of the time. So I have 200 pounds of lead I put in the seat and on the floor, and then I put everything in the car, including your hood. Your hood's going to be at least 10 pounds, okay? So you want to kind of lay that on there. Um, everything ready to go. The more uh, uh, exact you get every time and at the track, the more it's going to it's going to be specific you know you see guys that go to the racetrack and they're like oh my car was scaled something completely different in my garage well nine times out of ten either they're bsing or they when they scaled their car in the garage they didn't have everything in the car right okay so well how do we do this the first thing we're going to do once we set our our uh, get everything prepped get our right height set is we are going to adjust our left and rear percentages now, I'm going to tell you straight up, the only way you're going to change your left percentages and your rear percentages is physically move something in the car, okay? Bottom line, okay, once you get all your geometry set, your right height set where you want it, the only way you are going to affect the left side, which is your left and your left front, your left rear, okay, which I'm going to tell you how do we measure this in a second. But the only way you are going to change this is move something around, whether it's lead, a battery, what have you, okay? You can do wheel offsets, you can use spacers, whatever it is. But you want to be, depending on how your track does it, you want your left side with the minimum weight in the car to be as high as you can go. Because if you're turning left, left side's a huge factor, okay? It's going to affect your car, trust me. So you were going to move something in the car. Typically, we have lead to play with, okay? So you're gonna move some lead around. Now, rear weight, how are we gonna adjust our rear weight? Same thing, we are gonna move weight in the back of the car. Now, you don't want any weight behind your axles. No, okay, unless you're running dirt because you're trying to swing the rear end out. On asphalt, no, you want it forward of the axles. Matter of fact, a lot of guys won't even run a full fuel load because it affects the car sometimes if you don't have to, okay? So they'll run, say they got a 22 gallon cell, you're only gonna run 30 lap race. You don't wanna fill it all the way up. That will affect your car in a bad way. So you wanna put just enough fuel in there that you're gonna have maybe you know three or four or five gallons to finish the race you're in, but you're gonna add that weight. And you're gonna put it typically in the middle of the car, okay? Now, where do you want your moment in the back of the car? You want it typically it's right here in the driver. If you watch, you know, um, Cup cars, any cars, anytime they typically add weight, it's typically right here by the driver. Okay, that's because that makes the car stable and the car handles. Also, you want it low. Anything that weighs in the car, that's high in the car, you want on the left side because it's like a pendulum effect. Okay, when you go in the corner for centrifugal force. Uh, some things that I'll see a lot of times walking through the pits and cars that have come through my shop, is they will put lead because they, for whatever reason, have too much left side weight, okay? They'll put lead in the right front. No, not unless the rules tell you, like SRL, where you, you know, if you run aluminum heads, you gotta put 25 pounds in the right front and the left front on the saddle or, or on the kickouts, right? But you don't want it there because all that centrifugal weight's gonna go right to the right front tire. And that's what you're trying to avoid all the time in pavement. So what you want to do is kind of rotate your weight around. Any weight that's in the right on the right side of the car because you have too much left side, you want to move just forward of the axle on the right rear, and then you want to rotate that front weight. Say you have, you know, you want more front weight, you're going to move that front weight up to the left front. Okay? And that'll help that left front dig in and take weight off the right front, which will make the car pivot better. Okay? So you got to be smart about this. Again, anything high in the car, you want on the left side because it will act like a pendulum. What, ideally, what you want is about 100 pounds of lead and you can mount it you know, right on the ground to get your percentages where you want it and you want it in the middle of the car, okay? So, just give you a little cheat code. 
listen to it. Rotate your weight around. Anything high in the car, move it to the left side of the car. Even if you gotta move lead to the right side, but it's four inches off the ground. Okay, it'll make your car handle better. Keep weight off your right front. You don't want weight on your right front. It'll, it's gonna kill that right front anyways. Okay, so again, we talked about you have to move things around physically to get your uh, left side and your rear weights. Now, how do we get those percentages? What's the math, right? Even if you're not a math guy, this is super, super simple. So all four weights, you have a scale on each wheel, you add all four together. It's gonna give you a little picture on your scales. And this one will actually do it. A lot of these scales will give you the total. It'll add all four together, okay? That's your total weight, all four, right? Most tracks say, oh, you gotta weigh 2,500 pounds or whatever it is. Okay, that's your total weight. Now, they're also gonna tell you your left side percentage, okay? So like out here at the Speedway uh, at the Boring, you're a lot 58%. Now, when you need to ask a guy, is 58%, 58.0001, or is 58.58.9? Okay, because a lot of times they don't care. It depends on who the guy is doing the scaling. You ask him, hey, where, where is your cutoff point? Because I don't want to be as close as I can to it. Okay, so you got to know your track, you got to know the rules. You want to be left side as much as you can get legally. Okay, now, if they're way in the car after the race, like SRL does in the modifieds and their late models and stuff, you have to uh, uh, start off with a little bit of left side weight below the amount because you're gonna gain left side weight as that fuel burns off, depending on where your fuel tank's at. And typically, that fuel tank's over to the left a little bit. So you're gonna gain left by about 0.3 or whatever it is in my car. So I have to start, and they're right at 58.0. If you're over 58.0, you're done, okay? They will DQ you. So you wanna start off in that series like 57.7, 57.6, okay? And you're full of fuel like I weigh my car. So you have to know your rules and know your car, okay? What does your car weigh without fuel? What does it weigh without, with fuel, okay? Figure it out, you have to figure this out. Now, how do we get it? Now, if you were trying to get your left side weight, you were gonna add the left side tires together, those weights, okay? So say you get 1,600, I'm just throwing a number out there. You get 1,600, you're gonna divide that into your total weights, let's say 2,500. It's gonna be 0.5 whatever, 5.6, five, 5.7. Five, that's 57%. If you move the decimal point two points over, add a percent on it, that's percent. That's it. You just add up the tires that you want, divide them into your total, and then ignore the decimal point. First two digits, point, whatever, whatever. Okay? Same thing with your rear, except you're going to add up your rear weights. You're going to add those two together. Okay? And then divide them into there. Now, simple. Keep it simple, write it down, kiss, right? Consistency. Where would I start if I was you? You wanna be as close as you can to the left side and be legal. The other part of it is in your rear of your car, you wanna be with full fuel anywhere between 50, 51%. Your tire temps will dictate where you're at percentage wise, you at average them out front and rear. That'll tell you if you need more rear weight or more front weight, okay? Your left side, you always want the max you can get away with and be legal, period. You know, I've had guys come to me and say, okay, what's more important, my left side or my total weight? Okay, well, both, okay? There's ways to get your left side weight to the max without adding weight over 2,500 pounds. The bottom line is you better start looking at something in your car that you can move around, okay? Or get rid of so you can put lead in the car. You can wheel, use wheel offsets if they allow it. You can use spacers, okay? It's the way to do it, okay? So, now, where it starts getting difficult here, we're gonna move on to the third phase of this. We're gonna talk about cross weight. Cross weight affects your car. In the corner, you'll see a lot of people talk about cross weight. Cross weight, simple, is your right front and your left rear added together, and then you divide that into your total weight. Okay, whatever that percentage is, it's just a reference. Got it? So, um, let's say, um, give you an example. Let's say your left side wheels are at 58% and 
and your cross weight is at 58%, that means both your wheels are gonna be even in the front on by your scales. Mathematically, that 0.8% is gonna be on the left rear. Remember I told you your left rear is the one that holds most of the weight anything over 50% at least, which most asphalt cars are over 50%. So, how do we get that? Again, we got a little formula, your total weight, add your right front, your left rear, divide it into your total, gives you your cross weight percentage. Okay, now, how do we set it? Let's say, uh, give you another example. Let's say, um, take this off for a second. I just did the uh, well, TV show. So I did an example. So let's think about this for a second. If you had a table, card table, and all four legs were exactly the same length, that would mean that all four legs would be sharing the weight and they would all be the same height, right? So let's think about this on your car, your wheels or legs, or your right height is your leg, okay? So how do we increase the weight on the right front and the left rear? Well, I'm gonna tell you. We are going to lengthen the right front leg and the left rear leg. And then whatever we lengthen that, we don't want it to mess up our right height, right? So we're gonna take that away on the left front and the right rear. And our average is gonna stay the same. Our right heights, believe it or not, are gonna be really, really close. Now, how do we lengthen it? You can lengthen it depending on your car. By the jack bolt, if you were turning the jack bolt clockwise and raising the right height, you're lengthening the leg, okay? Same thing if you're running a coilover. If you were turning the coilover down and raising the right height on that end, you are lengthening the leg, which is going to put weight on that tire, static weight, okay? Now, there's dynamics, but you better watch the other video on if you're running bump stops because all that changes as soon as you start hitting bump stops. Okay, but we won't go into that to confuse you. Let's just say you're not allowed to run bump stops. You, even if you do run bump stops, you still gotta have a static in your car. You still have to set this up, get your ride heights because your clocking and your timing on the bumps is critical. Okay, so you wanna be consistent and you have to start keeping track. It's just bump stops take it to a whole nother level because you have to start looking at what the dynamic effects are. Okay, so once you've done that, you got your cross weight set. Typically, I'll give you another starting point. Remember I told you you want to be about 51%, 50, 51% in the rear, okay, full of fuel. Okay, on the left side, let's say your rule is 58%, which most tracks are the 58%. Set your cross weight at 58. Where your wheels, your tire, your static loads are even on the front tires, great starting point. If anything, the car might be a little tight, in other words, it'll push a little bit, but as a new driver or a new car, great place to start because you can start freeing it up from there based off your tire temps, right? So if you watch the other video, I explain how you can start making changes to your car by reading the tire temps. But if you know you're at 58%, what will your cross weight do through the whole turn, okay? So your cross weight affects the car through the, all three segments of the turn, your entry, your middle and your exit. You'll hear guys come in and they'll say, oh, I feel like I'm on top of the pavement, okay? Well, that takes a lot of work. You're sliding around, car's four wheel drift, whatever. Probably don't have enough cross weight in the car. Okay, bottom line. You can put cross weight in the car dynamically. If you're not running bumps, you put it in by your cross weight, like cup cars did back in the, you know, way back in the day. Okay, so it still affects the car, especially in the back of the car. If you're not running bump stops, a lot of guys aren't, I don't suggest you do it. If you're just starting out, you can adjust your drive off by your crossway. Drastically affects it, okay? So you just increase it, it's going to give you bite or put more weight on those tires. If you put more weight on the left rear and the right front, it's gonna tighten the car. It's gonna put more weight on there, but you have to be careful because it's also gonna increase the temperature of those tires on the right front, okay, and the, and the left rear. Okay, so again, that's where tire temps come in. You Ideally, you wanna work averages all the way around. There's other ways to get to City Hall or Skin a Cat. So you have to play around, know your car, try different things in order to achieve what you wanna do because a lot of times if you affect one thing, it's gonna affect something else, okay? Because everything's dynamic, everything's moving in the car. This is just your static baseline. Okay, which you have to have. You have to know where you're starting. 
before you can start making adjustments. And then if you make adjustments at the track based off your tire temps, you want to write down what the change was, what the tire temp did. Then, on hopefully you didn't wreck your car or, some, or screw something up, then you can come back and rescale your car and say, okay, I made this adjustment. Uh, we put five turns in, crossweight in it. It should have increased the, you know, how much did it increase percentage wise? We went too far. Maybe we'll take half out that time. So you can look at what the actual percentage is on the scale pads. Okay, so you have notes, you have consistent. You're making gains on your car. Okay, if you're tearing up your car every week, you want to make sure you're putting it back together every time the same way. Otherwise, you got to start over within reason. I mean, if you're changing something small, it's not going to be drastic. But you want to be consistent. Make adjustments at your track, what you're doing. This is supposed to be fun. It's a lot easier to dial yourself out than it is to dial yourself in for that extra tenth or whatever. When the reality is it's probably driving. I'll be blunt. You know, I'm guilty too. Okay? A lot of times you cut the corner down, the car's pushing. You're like, shit, I don't know, the car's a piece of crap, it's loose off. Well, the reality is you cut the corner going down, and then you had to turn the wheel in the center to get it to turn, and then you picked up the throttle and it unloaded all the cross weight in the car, and the car's looser and shit off the corner, cooking the right rear tire. Where did that start? That started with the driver cutting the corner down. Okay, so you have to be very, very conscious of what you're doing as a driver and where your hands are at, how much steering you're putting in, the whole deal. That comes with time. That's why a lot of, you know, guys, veterans been around, they know what they like. It also comes. You're not gonna hop off of a video game, hop in a car and go out there, you know, very, and go out there and kick butt. Typically the guys who do that have somebody test in their car. And I know this because guys pay me to test their car. Okay, so I'll go in there, feel the car out. Okay, this is what it needs or whatever. And then they get in there and they're running three or tenths, you know, faster than they were. This is also why you see a lot of people at the upper levels, you see the same guys running up front every week. They know what it's supposed to feel like, they know what the adjustments are on their cars, and they're keeping track of it from an engineering point of view. Where you see a lot of the entitled drivers, we'll just leave it at that, you know, they've showed up with a car that was competitive, but they can't get that extra two or three tenths over the long run because they don't know what their car is supposed to feel like and they don't really understand what's going on with the car, the engineering and part of it, okay? So with that said, if you enjoy it like I do, uh, please like and prescribe. Um, uh, the biggest thing I tell you is be safe, be consistent, write everything down, and have fun, man. I mean, we're, racing's getting way out of hand. It's expensive. You know, your family, you're taking time away. Hopefully it's a family thing. And to just go out and have a good time. That's it. Turn laps. You know, you don't have to be winning to have a good time. Now, it's fun to win. Don't get me wrong. But that comes. Don't get discouraged. Keep creeping up on it. Keep making adjustments to your car. Learn the physics. Learn the engineering. Watch the videos. I'm, I'm giving you 30 years worth of information. This is the stuff that nobody wants to tell you. I'm telling you. If you want extra, uh, you got questions or what have you, you can hit me up on the race professor, you know, on the channel. I'll try and get to you. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't check that a lot. Um, you're better off probably going to my Facebook page, which is Billy Mitchell in Henderson, Nevada. Friend me. There's like over 2,000 people in there. I'm getting a whole bunch of uh, IMs every week, you know, people sending me tire temps, all that kind of stuff. Billy, what, what do you think I should do or whatever? You know, and a lot of times I can look at tire temps and tell you what your car is doing based and then get your driver feedback and tell you what I would do or if you got a mechanical issue that maybe you haven't figured out yet. So hit me up, I'll friend, friend me on Facebook, I'll, I'll uh, you know, friend you back, whatever. Um, I enjoy this. So with that said, I hope everybody has a good time at the races and God bless America.